Wow, have we got a treat for you this morning. My guest this morning, Dawn, is a very conscious traveler with a deep love for Africa, its people, and the environment. From gorilla trekking in Uganda, tree planting in Zambia, cramp and hiking in Patagonia, and binging on Turkish delight in Turkey. On her blog, The Incidental Tourist, she shares her stories and photographs, recommendations, and love for the world. And today, we get the exclusive chat with her about her experience of trekking in Uganda to see the gorillas in their natural Habitat Dawn, so good to have you on the show Thank this you morning. For me here. I must tell you, Kat and I have spoken about this before, and we've always wanted to to um, experience this. But what motivated you to go on a trek in Uganda to see gorillas? I um, have always wanted to see gorillas in the wild. It was just a dream of mine that yeah. I always had for as long as I remember. And when the opportunity came up to join a group uh, with Nomad Tours last year, I jumped at it yeah. and um, made that dream come true. Was it, was it a very difficult experience trekking through the forest and is it easy to spot them amongst the vegetation? What, um, how it works is there are only 400 gorillas in Uganda, wow. 800 left in the wild. Yeah. Uh, there are 20 families in the Bwindi National Park and they allow eight people, three groups of eight per day. So you go with a porter, if you like, yeah. a guide, and there are actually trackers on the mountain, which makes it a little easier to find. They keep them as wild and okay. unhabituated as possible, okay. which is very important. Now for the regular person just watching the show, I'm sure that we're worried about, will we be able to make that hike, that trick? Is, what's, the, what's the level of strain? Do you have to be very fit? Do you have to be very, uh, you know, a, an avid hiker to be able to do it? I'm not an avid hiker. I'm yeah. very bad at climbing, but I put in a lot of um, work and preparation. Uh, that is actually Gandhi who was my porter and oh, I do recommend wow. taking one. You need a good level of fitness for Uganda because there yeah. are mountain gorillas and we trekked through rainforest for about three hours where mm. they're cutting back with a machete to oh. pave the path because they're always what? in a different area. You so you're slipping and Gandhi just had my hand and he was helping me as we went and it so yes you need fitness but I like that I like that you have to put in the eff okay. extra effort and and you have to make it they're not that accessible okay. so it so makes it even more worthwhile. I know so you're not necessarily following a beaten track per se. Not at all. Um, are the tours organized? I saw a lot of different people in the photographs here as well. Is it something that's organized, that's safe, you feel like there's structure involved? There is definitely structure. Because it's limited to only three groups of eight on the mountain per day, you do need a gorilla permit. Yeah. Um, they are through nomad, nomad tours, we booked this, you can do fly-ins, but I did that with an overlanding, seven-day overlanding trip in Uganda, which was a wonderful way of actually yeah. seeing more of the country. And you buy your gorilla permit in advance. There are months where they offer discounts, and okay. South Africans can also get discounts. Yes. So I think that's definitely worth bearing <laughs> in mind with the planning. Yeah. Um, so you know on that day that your group, your your guide is going to take you, and and it's just very much a humbling thing mm -hmm. to see these great, incredible, vulnerable animals. Yeah in their natural habitat, you know, chomping on bamboo and, and playing. I mean, this is one of the females, and uh, but one of the special moments was a baby playing and a oh. big silverback sort of just giving him a bit of a hug and then oh. letting him go, and it was just, precious. I was very Look emotional. That. Look at that over there on the screen. That is the most precious thing I've ever seen. Now, Dawn, one thing that I'm always worried about is always entering an animal's natural habitat because that's where they live. What are the safety issues involved in there, not only for humans, but for the animals themselves? Because are they ever frightened at the fact that we're there? Uh, what they do is they keep a seven meter guideline. Okay. So you are not allowed to go within seven meters of the animal, right. which I think is important. Yeah. You don't want them to be habitu too habituated. Yeah. Um, of the 20 families, only 10 have people go near them and on, that's on a rotational basis. Yeah. And you need to respect that and be very quiet and not grab the baby and give it a hug even if you really want to. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you just keep a very safe, respectful distance. Yeah. Um, you are guided the whole way, you are mm. told where to be, you yeah. know, you're sort of balancing on a ledge, trying yeah. to take a photo, trying to take in the moment, mm. and they just may walk past you. I was very lucky, the big silverback walked right past me, probably within a meter oh, or two, wow. and I was just told, sit, be quiet. In a so. few words, what was the best experience, the best part of this experience for you? I think just being there. You only get to yeah. be with them for an hour. Wow. So you track, you find them, and you, you have that hour, yeah. and I think important to savor it and not watch it through a lens or 
get too involved in taking photos, but just to be wow. humbled by the privilege of being that close to them. Dawn, you are absolutely beaming. I, I think that this experience has changed you, and I now want to do it more than ever. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on the show and for much. sharing that experience Thank with you for us. having me. I highly recommend it. Absolutely incredible. Well, Dawn highly uh, recommends it, and if you would like to have your very own trekking experience to meet the gorillas, your best bet is to join an organized overlanding company like Nomad Tours. And after your trekking, you can stay for a while and enjoy Kampala, Uganda, uh, the, the, the capital, after a, uh, after a two-night stay for two at the Kampala Serena Hotel. You would collect, wait for it, 4,000 Avios booking through Rocket Miles. So it's definitely a moment that you're not going to um, forget at all. So um, thank you so much, Dawn, for being with us and for, of course, uh, sharing all of those memorable mo moments with us here on Express. Thank so you. hope to see that you get to do what? this as well. Wonderful. So, <laughs> well, it is. It is. Um, um, for uh, we actually are going to be going over to Tenji and she's going to be sharing some of her experience as well. Oh wait, we're actually going to go to Kat and he is outside. <laughs>